I've got George Harrison here. Okay, I've got Paul Simon here. And I've got James Taylor here. Isn't that wonderful? And I just hit record and I'm away. Change between James Taylor giving Paul Simon a go, but it's so simple, isn't it? Isn't that just wonderful? Now, if I want to actually interface more with this and change from chords to notes, that's over here, by the way. You start to get the real deal and flex. And when I change the instruments in the same place, I get distorted guitar and pedals. <laughs> Pull the faces if you want to. And Eddie Van Halen. It's ridiculous. And when I'm touching the strings, as I touch the strings, it's either softer or louder. And it's just a piece of glass. And anybody can do this. Literally anybody can do this. That's why you have the iPads there to try it. So let's go a stage further. Instead of the uh, guitar. Let's look at Smart Keyboard. Smart Keyboard comes up with this wonderful grand piano with these wonderful sounds. It's incredibly pianistic, isn't it? It's wonderful. And I can do the same chordal thing. I've now changed to autoplay. But what they've done, they put the chord at the top, the right hand and the left hand. How about this then? And I'm now going to add A minor over the right hand. Keep an E in the left hand. Do you recognise this, Tim? This is the entire back catalogue of Phil Collins' ballads for the last 20 years. <laughs> it's just unfair, isn't it? And you've got a fantastic selection of sounds to play with. Now, one other thing I want to show you about playing before we go on to interfacing with guitars and keyboards and stuff is that whilst this is a great music app, when I go back to my songs, which I'll do now, I'm going to go right back there and create a new song. Very simple, and look how quick it is. This time I'm going to pick up this one, which is the mic, just to show you something which I think is wonderful, because you're probably kind of engaged with this at a musical level. It's a great music app but it's also a great literacy app and a language app and a science app and a history app. Because if you wanted to think about somebody quickly recording what they think, okay, they can do, which you can just literally hit record or write a story. So this is going to be a story and it's going to be uh, learning uh, some French words for today. So we're going to be um, counting. So good morning, welcome to Beth. It's going to be a very noisy recording. But what I wanted to say was that in this French lesson we're going to look at the French word for hello. And the word for hello is... That's right, it's bonjour. So when I finish the recording, you can try this yourselves, I can actually change my voice. So my narrator for my story is a chipmunk. So good morning, welcome to Beth. It's going to be a very noisy recording. Change the pitch. Or I can change him into a monster. And it's really nice in here for you to be able to hear this, but then I can just go and create another track and have a dialogue from one person to I can be two people, three people. And then I can add music for my story, and then I can export it. So don't think of GarageBand on iPad as just this wonderful app for making great music, but you can use it in other lessons by the virtual, the very nature that it has audio and simply. Okay, so what I was asked to do for this part, and I'm going to try and do this um, <laughs> running two iPads at once. And I'll explain why. This, I this iPad is connected to the screens, and what I'm going to do is this one is going to be the one I connect here. But I can't connect it to a screen because I'm using the connection. Does that make sense on a Thursday afternoon at bed? Yeah, so I'm going to do it on here while you're watching it on there. Anyway, here we go. So I'm going to create a song from scratch. 
just the way we did just now. If you want to follow this through, by all means. So I'm going to start off with smart drums. And here we go. And I'm just going to lay down, lay down a drum track. I've done exactly the same thing you did earlier. And I'm going to connect up, like I said to you earlier, the audio so you can hear what I'm doing. So I'm literally generating this drum track and going... There we go, play something. Okay, that's going to be my drum track, I like that. And then we'll do some bass and some piano. And more cowbell. Tambourine? No, I don't like tambourine. Here we go. Crescendo. Okay, so the drums are down. Drop into my track menu, and I'm going to add some bass. Okay, let's pick up the smart bass. And of course, I could go in here, pick up the strings if I want to, etc. But what I'm going to do is take it a stage further now and add MIDI. So this is the iRig, it's about 30, 40 pounds. And as many of you will see my demos before I do everything live. So if it goes wrong, it just happens right then and there. So I'm going to connect it so it goes into the MIDI out of the keyboard. It takes a second to sort of kick in. And there it is, coming up. So I'm going to... Which is a nice little sequence that I'm going to be putting together. And we'll hit record, and off we go again. And we'll hit stop. And what I'm doing there, in case you're wondering, I'm now using that one. And we're just going to pop into the track menu and I'm going to loop that. So I've got bass playing along. I'm going to now add keyboards. And this time I'm going to play the keyboards from this. But I'm not going to use piano, I'm going to use electric piano, so you can see the... Which is a, a really nice road sound, I can have a little bit more chorus onto it, and then hit record. And we go. Okay, and we'll do the same thing and duplicate that. And loop that. So now I've got keyboards, bass, etc. Now what's happening in terms of uh, looking at this from a track perspective is that in this view I'm just going to show you that you can expand the track there. It's a little tiny um, icon there for moving that back the way. But what that gives me is my volume control. So I'm starting to mix that. I want the, the keyboards a little bit louder. So let's add a uh, guitar. Okay, so I'm going to take that one out and go back to what I did at the beginning. So this interface, um, there are several on the market. There's one that goes into the headphone jack. Uh, this is the one I like, which is the Apogee Jam. It's got the same <coughs> iPad, iPod dock connector. It goes straight in the side there. When you're doing it, try not to switch the iPad off at the same time. And I'm going to literally add a track, and this track is going to be the amp settings. And for this, I'll need the aid of a guitar. Quite a few people have asked um, where are the things that I'm showing are, and can I give them the names. My card there has got my website on it, and that's purely that I've, I've brought the microphone, the leads, etc., all in one place. So if you want to find the links to them, they're just on my website, just to save you the hassle. So when you add this track, the one I'm doing here, and plug in the interface, you get a little monitor on, monitor off icon. So if I do that, you should have my guitar. <laughs> So if I was to go that, to that one, you can hear it kicking into a, a Marshall. It's got these wonderful controls here. I'm going to turn the output down. It responds just like an amp. Turn the gain up. 
we want to hack into this and turn all of these up to 11, but we can't do that. There we go, it's just starting to, yeah, to sound. But it's not really suitable uh, for this track. Just to show you, there's lots of presets, and I've created, as I showed you at the beginning, lots of save presets. Uh, uh, lots of lovely uh, delays, but again, that's not really a suitable sound for this. I'm just going to use a nice clean and uh, just record over the track. And I can do the same thing, and I can then duplicate this, and I'm now going to connect up the microphone. So, before I disconnect the guitar, I'm going to turn the monitoring off and show you about the microphone. <laughs> Quite a few people have said they've struggled to find a microphone that will work with an iPad. And this little beauty is called the Meteor. And again, it's by Samson, who produced the CO1U, the first kind of USB microphone we used with the Mac. How many? I'm going to do a junior now, but uh, three minutes. Yeah. So here's the my Meteor microphone. It's about 50, 60 pounds. And uh, how do I connect USB? into the iPad. Camera connection kit. Good afternoon. Camera connection kit. And just literally plug it straight in. Now what I'm going to do here is uh, go into my instruments and just choose my audio track and plug that in. Okay? Now when you do this, this interface becomes, if you like, the audio interface. So what we need to do is actually find something to record. Now if I play you the track, do you notice a problem I have? You can't hear it anymore. Because the audio is now coming out of here. It's an audio interface. Yeah. So it's ideal. All I need you to do is find a way of not having it fall over with all this stuff that I've got going, and we can add the classy recorder over the top. to the screen and let you see that. That's GarageBand on the iPad and with one click on I, I can export that as a stereo file. The other thing I can do is export it as a GarageBand file into iTunes and pick it up on the Mac. So that 8-track GarageBand file can go onto GarageBand on the Mac and then use the Mac GarageBand and add more tracks and notation. Does that make sense on a Thursday sweaty afternoon? Yeah? Thank you. All the information of what I've been talking to you about is available on my website, which is there as a card for that. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this afternoon. My name is Joe Moretti, and it's been a pleasure to entertain you this afternoon. Thank you.